hey, it's me, I'm back, and you're back. We're both back. We're ready for part two of making a pregnant girl kick topper. As you can see, we've got our kick topper from yesterday. She's pretty darn firm. So we're ready to add her facial features and her hair, and she's gonna look so pretty. And she'll be ready for the cake. Okay, let's do this. Oh, by the way, if you haven't uh, watched the first part of this, you can check out the first video, part one, and you can see how to make all, her whole body and all of the steps that we went through to get up to this point. And uh, so if you're behind, you can catch up. Otherwise, let's get started. So we have a circle, and the first thing I'm gonna do is define where the chin is. So I'm gonna put my two fingers sort of where the eyes would be because it's gonna naturally indent them and then pull out, pull out the chin. See what I, see, that's all I did. And this is the back of the skull here. My forehead always ends up getting kind of smushed, but I fix that with hair. <laughs> so we've got the beginnings of our skull now. And that's, that's all I did. Just two fingers, pull out the chin. And then the next thing I do is define where the nose is by pinching the bridge of the nose and then using my tool to define where the bottom of the nose would be by pushing up. And it very, very naturally makes uh, nostrils and the nose area. So I'm gonna go ahead and use my fingers to continue defining that and making a nice, cute, pointed nose. See how this is going? And then I'm going to continue to bring the chin forward into a nice point. And then where these two eye sockets are, I'm gonna use my finger to sort of define where the cheekbones are. And then on the side, I'm going to come up to define where the, the uh, jawline is. And I'm kind of exaggerating everything because Fawnet has a tendency to sort of have a little give to it. So you see we have like a little head going on, ball tool, to sort of define where the eye sockets are. Make sure you make the bridge of the nose nice and thin. Flatten out the side of her jaw here. So there we have our little head. Okay, so we have our little pregnant woman here and she's all dry and ready for her face to be painted. And the way I paint faces is just with a really um, small paintbrush and food coloring. So I'm gonna use black and some red for her lips and some blue for her eyeballs. And I don't usually use any water or anything. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. I usually just use the cap as the sort of the palette. Add 
some eyelashes. Make sure you back up and check out your work every now and then. Make sure that you're even. One eye is not lower than the other. And then I'm just going to give her some quick little eyebrows. I find it easier to do the second eyebrow upside down, I don't know why. If you haven't ever drawn features before, oops, it's always helpful to practice a few times before you go ahead and draw on your face because, you know, it's kind of a one-shot deal, although you could wipe this off with water and start over, but you have to make sure you wait until the, until the fondant is dry before you water on her lips here. Hopefully it'll be okay. Mm, I don't know if I like that. So I'm going to show you. You can just wipe off when you don't like it. And then, like I said, you gotta wait for her thought to dry before you can paint again, otherwise it'll bleed. So I'm gonna go ahead and just move on to her hair. Need a little piece, kind of arbitrary piece, sort of like an elongated uh, teardrop in and then I just use a tool any tool will do that will help you put in some lines sort of give her hair some dimension and I'm just gonna start laying that careful you don't stick your finger on her freshly polished eye and of course you can vary this hair color to whatever color you want it to be. She could be redheaded or she could be brunette. She could have black hair. She could have pink hair, which might be cute. I'm gonna start adding in some of the lighter color. I'm gonna mix it in with a darker color, but not all the way to have some dimension in it. Sort of pay attention to how the hair might lay if, you know, this was a real girl. Give it some sort of little bit of dimension as far as, you know, the flow of the hair. You don't want to just lay it on there willy-nilly. Because she's stylish. 
<laughs> She's got like a mohawk right now. That's not very stylish. So this is what I meant when you're making the head, you know, sometimes the forehead can look a little flat and not like it's tall enough. So you just put a little extra volume on top of the head with the hair so that their head has the correct proportions. And then after I have basically all of her hair kind of on there, I get a little bit more I get smaller with the strands. So I'll take this piece here. See, so she's just got a little some swipe, side swept bangs here a little bit. And I'm gonna take this. Sort of blend that in. to the dimensions of her hair. Paying attention to where the part is, which is right here. And this is why we needed the head to dry before we put it on, put on the hair. Because otherwise her head would just smash while you're pressing in to add this So here she is, all finished on top of her cake, looking cute. You see she sits on there just perfectly, looks very natural. Obviously you can add other embellishments to this, but that's your basic pregnant lady cake topper right there. Check out my other videos for more helpful tutorials. I hope you enjoyed this and you learned some good stuff. See you next time.